Hi everyone, welcome to Active Self Protection Extra. I'm here today joined by a friend, Nano, the Marketing and Equipment Manager for Vertra. And we're here in their kind of test and um, you know marketing facility and showing some of these units. And I wanna introduce you to a unit that I think can really not only train law enforcement uh, in really realistic, excellent ways, but also I think change the public's perception about the duties and the decisions that law enforcement makes. So, uh, Nano, thanks for letting us come, dude. No problem. It's great to have you guys here. And uh, I'm going to tell a quick story, all right, uh, just to get this started, why I think this is important. Um, I got introduced to Erica Chadwick, who um, is the founder of this company called Tech Mobility. And um, Erica said, man, I was big time. Defund the police. I don't like what police do. I'm, I'm really upset about um, you know, abuse and those kinds of things. And then she went and did some scenarios in Vertra and it radically changed her view. She was like, whoa, this really changes things. And it totally changed her view to now, no, now we need to really start to understand how police interface with the community and how we need to educate everyone on all sides. And so it, it just radically changed this wonderful human's view of what was going on. So congrats to you guys. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks for that promotion. <laughs> and, uh, and I think that's really good, valuable use I, that I think is probably even beyond the scope of what you intended the units for. Mm -hmm. But is it this, this extra thing that is amazing, man? Yeah. Um, so at its core, the Vertra unit is uh, the different units you guys manufacture are training for law enforcement officers. Correct. Yeah. And military. And, oh, and military as well. Okay, so, so we're going to focus more on the LE side than we are on the, the military side. But, but tell us kind of the heart behind what is the core of Vertra. So the core of Vertra, at least for me personally, when I first came on board and heard about Vertra over a year ago, is to just better give the tools that law enforcement and military need to be the best in their roles. So we know that training in, in the United States for police is not where it can be and where it should be. And when there's a lot of debate about it, but we're not here to argue about that as so much I, as to actually provide a solution to that. It's like, hey. I don't think the, there is an argument. No, literally no <laughs> cops that I know think they get enough training. Mm -hmm. And I know a lot of cops and every police trainer that I know say, man, my street cops need more training because they need to survive encounters better. Um, I think our culture says, man, our police need uh, more comprehensive training. Now, I always say you get the training you're willing to pay for mm -hmm. and you get the police force you're willing to pay for. But I love that you guys actually say, no, this is a solution to that because scenario based training is crazy expensive, guys. I mean, to set up force on force, which is actual decision making with a gun in your hand, with two way range is crazy expensive to do right. Mm -hmm. And this is a much more cost effective way to do that because it makes you make decisions. Right, so we're looking right here at a VST system. So why don't you describe to us just kind of how the system works. So the VST, what you're looking at right now is our single screen system, one of our single screen, single screen systems. The other one is a V100. The difference between the two is a V100 is uh, just different hardware, more portable, run by a laptop, whereas a VST is static and is run by an actual computer to be able to do run certain programs better, such as our marksmanship or our scenarios. So when you're running a VST, it's a static unit. So you're running on a rack like that, that you can see in the background. So, you know, you've got a little more computing oomph here, so you can do some stuff. But the, I mean, the V100 is a portable unit mm. that say you had a smaller department, you needed to use your live fire range for it. So you can take it down and put it back up. Um, and I love the fact, not just marksmanship, but you can run really accurate scenarios that are filmed with law enforcement in mind. Uh, and I'm sure at some point we might be able to talk about uh, private citizen ones in mind, but the law enforcement ones are pretty baller. So let's just start with those. And then, uh, I don't know, can you see here the fact that there's a second screen, John? So if we, if we come this way, if you want to expand this VST system because you want more lanes, they can add screens and the VST is powerful enough to handle it, which is pretty cool. Well, why don't you come over here and let's talk about the, the, 180, because this one's pretty legit. So sometimes <laughs> rocking out the M240 Bravo, you know, again, it's pretty kind of cool. Um, this is a, a 180 system. This is a 180. So the 180 
is all is static, just like the VST. You're not gonna, it's not portable. You can't transport it and run it different places. Um, it is meant for judgmental use of force as well as marksmanship. Um, a lot of people like it because it is versatile in the sense that you can have a little bit of that, you know, situational awareness, but as well have that distance in case you want to go on a marksmanship range. And I, I think, again, so you've got, if you can see up here, uh, I, I mean, obviously there's a lot of, of uh, proprietary stuff, but what you can see here is a couple of cameras from each projector that are watching the projector so they can see hits because they're IR laser based Lasers. hits. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, uh, now, of course, uh, you've seen us do some stuff with um, like Laser Academy, those things, and they do visible lasers, which is great um, because it's cheap, except for you guys are using IR lasers, so now I can't even spot my shot by hitting, mm -hmm. seeing a laser beam on it. <laughs> so it's really, truly like what you're going to get in a real environment. Correct. Yeah. Which is pretty cool, but this isn't even the big daddy of them all. Now, this one is the flagship unit. This is... Uh, the, the 300, which is a 300 degree trainer. It's the, the big monster, right? The Mercedes Benz version, the Maserati. Yeah, this is the, the one I feel personally is the most truly immersive one. Obviously that's what it's designed for because you have 300 degrees where you have to, you have to know what's going on around you when you're in a situation. So this one really helps with the, that training aspect when you're in law enforcement as Situa situational awareness and and really getting that down. And obviously, when we use this guy, and you'll get to see some video on that, I, I really think the, the true part of this is, is that you live in a 360 degree environment, and in, when you're here, 300 of those 360, you have to pay attention, you have to recognize, I'm dealing with a threat here, but there might be something going on over here, and I have to you know kind of keep my head on a swivel a little bit and not get so immersed in this, that I neglect to see that there could be a problem over here. And a lot of times in a lot of scenarios, there's not, but every once in a while there is. And if you're not paying attention and seeing what's going on in your world, you could have problems. And the reason that we can manipulate that here is because behind each screen is its own speaker. And the instructor that's here at the station can actually manipulate the sound within the environment. So if somebody's not paying attention to, you know, their surroundings while they're talking to somebody, then the instructor can distract them and make something, make a sound on a different screen for them to turn and look. And, and directionally based, which is amazing. So you're gonna see the baseline tools, right? So obviously it's using IR laser and you use uh, compressed gas to CO2. cycle the action CO2. Mm -hmm. um, and so you can see here, this is an AR magazine. Um, the CO2, you know, it's just a CO2 load magazine that then you've got a kind of a special bolt for an AR yep. that goes in that. Same thing, uh, generally speaking, you guys uh, send Glocks with this, right? Because so many departments use Glocks. Glocks yeah. um, and it's in the magazine, right? So you've seen that and that cycles the guns, makes them go pew pew, and they use an IR laser. But I think it's super cool that they have other tools and you can see how accurate they are. Yes. So we've got things like an X26 taser. So this is actually a real X26 taser. Just to show you that we take real weapons, like all our ARs and pistols are real. All we do is take out the barrel and replace it with our laser kit and use our CO2 magazines for the recoil. But this. <laughs> what you didn't see off camera is Neil walked off because he hates the electricity. <laughs> <laughs> and so well, basically we just designed the insert that goes into it so that it shoots out a laser and acts as a real taser. Acts as a taser would so that when you're in a scenario, if you miss, it'll say, dude, you missed. What are we going to do? If you hit and you get barbs and prong spread, then you get no an effective hit. Yeah. Same thing. You've got an OC spray here. Uh, and obviously this is like a kind of a Mark IV size training unit mm -hmm. um, that what you can see here is, is I don't know if you can see, that's actually a, an IR laser instead of um, an OC dispenser. But that same thing, I'm using the tool that I would have in my belt putting that out there. And then when I hit the button, it gives me a, a IR laser that then the computer recognizes as a spray pattern, mm -hmm. which is amazing. Super cool. A uh, couple of lights here, very common here, this particular one, a Surefire branded light. But, but again, if I have a handheld light, which every cop should, uh, bunches of them. And when I hit this, it doesn't give me a, a visible light. What it gives me is it gives me an IR signal that then the computer decides where is this light uh, 
you know, uh, showing and where is it pointed at? And it illuminates that based on that. Correct. Which is freaking cool, man. Again, you guys know I'm big on handheld lights and every private citizen and every law enforcement officer. Same thing with pistol mounted lights, right? You can see here again, replaced with an IR version, which is pretty amazing. So uh, I also think this is mean and awesome at the same time. Now tell me what this is. So that is our threat fire. Uh, we are the only simulation company for training law enforcement that is allowed to use this in front of a screen. Um, basically what it does, I'll just show you. You put this on your belt. And so you pay a pain penalty if you make something, if you get shot, Yes. Or the trainer, the training officer can can set a negative penalty for other stuff too. Not being not getting behind cover, things like that. A dog biting you. And if you've ever done anything like like I've trained with shock knives and stuff like that, it, it doesn't injure you. Uh, and this isn't like an incapacitator like an X twenty six is. It just hurts. It just ah, you know, God darn it. But it, it's not like sticking your finger in a 110 because that'll that'll do damage to you. Yeah. But you definitely know something went wrong and that makes the the heart rate go up and it makes the stress happen and that's why they call it a threat fire. Um, and that what I showed you was a two and a half seconds. That's the max that it can go. But more normally agencies will train between 5, 0.5 and 0.7 seconds. Just a little, hey mm -hmm. man, something went wrong. Oh, okay. Oh, I gotta, I gotta move. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta do something. Sure. So this adds stress and, and this stress is different. I know sometimes people say, oh, you know, before you shoot or whatever, you should do some push-ups or run around the block or whatever to get your heart rate up. Physical stress, like physical exertion, is not like psychological stress. And this adds psychological stress. It adds, oh, I don't want that. That's bad news. Oh, no, I got to do something to make this bad thing go away. And that's psychological stress, Correct. which is freaking awesome. Um, now, I know. OK, so listen, if you're, you want to actually buy one of these, you're not going to buy one of these as a private citizen. You're just probably not, unless you've got crazy amounts of money. Um, and for law enforcement folks, go, go in and get a hold of them. Just Google Vertra, and you probably have a connection through your department anyways. Um, but these aren't cheap. No, they're not. And they're not supposed <laughs> to be cheap. You can't get quality like this cheap. Correct. And, uh, and, and but, but when you think about, okay, so maybe I spent a couple hundred thousand dollars putting a system like this together, but how much training do I get out of it? How much value do I get out of it per officer? So you got to think of the time you're saving from traveling out to a range or setting up the force on force yep. or ammunition itself. Um, there's just a lot of factors into it where this will pay for itself. It will <laughs> pay for itself. Very quickly. I mean, <laughs> gosh, right now with the cost of ammo, for gracious sakes, you know what I mean? Every time you shoot a nine mil, it's like 60 cents right now, which is ridiculous. But uh, I mean, even without that, I go, okay, cool. I put this aside. I put on my stuff and I'm just going to warm up with some marksmanship. I've got the gun that I'm going to carry, the way that I'm going to carry it, run some stuff, put it away and rock and roll. Um, I love the idea of training an officer with the tools that they will have on their person and them being able to use all of those tool options and then having scenarios that different tool options are good. And you also train officers to use verbal commands too and verbal skills. Correct. Because yeah. they're branching and you guys will see some of those on the, in the days ahead. Uh, I gotta tell you, I think this system is like next level training. This is like, this is where it starts to get realistic without the danger you know you don't want to train a cop on the street to do their job this is where you can where you can make the mistakes without the real life reper repercussions and actually learn from it so we're going to run some scenarios in weeks ahead but i just want to introduce you to kind of how the system works we're going to definitely run some in this bad boy and look out for those man i really appreciate the intro man yeah thanks